greatest weapon of all. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. It's time we started this. Pain isn't something we thought. All we can ever do for our heroes is remember them. And they gave up two lives. The one they were living in and the one they would have lived. They gave up everything for our country, for us. They pray for freedom and justice. Some veterans are not getting the timely care that they need. Less than 1% of Americans serving in uniform. Good news is, is that in recent years, we've made historic investments to boost the VA budget. What is it? Why should we care? We should care about press freedom because... Because we were informed. In democratic societies, free, diverse, and pluralist media enable public debates and are essential checks You don't look status. Let's discuss. Hey guys, uh, welcome to Wet to Wet podcast, a new episode. Um, today we are talking about presumption of service connection for chronic diseases. And uh, it's a short reminder, Wet to Wet uh, is a non-profit educational project dedicated to assist veterans with adjustments to civilian lifestyle and to provide assistance in obtaining the VA and uh, other available benefits that you have earned. And um, VA presumes that certain disabilities were caused by military service. And this is because of the unique circumstances of, the, of a specific veteran's military service. And uh, if a presumed condition is diagnosed in a veteran within a certain group, they can be awarded disability compensation. Uh, basic stuff. So let's go into um, today's topic and we'll start with uh, um, uh, some general ideas. What is presumptive condition uh, before we go into uh, details? Yeah, so if you're diagnosed with a chronic disease within one year of active duty, you should apply for disability compensation. Examples of chronic diseases include arthritis, diabetes, or hypertension. Or if you serve continuously for 90 days and are diagnosed with ALS after discharge, you can establish service connection for the, for that disease. Veterans in the following group may qualify for presumptive disability benefits. So a common one, thankfully, is in a lot of us is former prisoners of war who have a condition that is at least 10% disabil <laughs> disabling. And that's going to be a safe bet. Uh, Vietnam veterans who were exposed to Agent Orange served in the Republic of Vietnam or in a vessel operating not more than 12 nautical miles from Vietnam or the, the land of Vietnam and Cambodia between January of 1962 to May 7, 1975. Atomic veterans exposed to ionization radiation and who experienced one of the following participated in atmospheric nuclear testing occupied or were prisoners of war in Hiroshima or Nagasaki, served before February 1st, 1992 at a diffusion plant in Kentucky, Ohio, or Tennessee, served before January 1st, 1974 in Alaska, I believe that was something to do with that earthquake, um, Gulf War veterans who served in Southwest Asia theater of operations have a condition that is at least 10% disabling by December 31st, 2021. Gulf War deployed veterans who served in Southwest Theater of Operations during the Persian Gulf War, served in Afghanistan, Syria, Uzbekistan, on or after September 19th, 2001. So those are just some of the, some of the groups, the common groups that do have some potentials for um, these types of disabilities. Yeah. yeah, and um, like right now, the one that is going on and we are trying to figure out, you know, how much disability to give to uh, people who served in uh, Afghanistan and were exposed by the burn pits uh, debris. So uh, that's one that you can still file for and uh, probably uh, get like an automatic uh, disability for that. Yeah, so look into when it comes to the Iraq War, you know, the Southwest Asia vets look into the allergies like sinus, sinusitis and rhinitis and asthma. Those are the ones they're looking at right now. Mm. But I'm sure that list will grow. Yeah, there are certain 
chronic diseases that a veteran may be presumptively entitled uh, to if the disease manifests to a certain degree within a specified time frame after the veteran's period of service. And uh, the VA has acknowledged that if a veteran develops characteristic uh, uh, manifestations of a chronic disease within one year following discharge from the service, it's more likely than not that the veteran had the condition in service. Therefore, for presumption to apply, the veteran uh, does not need uh, to have service treatment records showing he was uh, treated for the condition. And um, right now there are about 41 chronic diseases that are eligible for, presumptive, uh, for presumption of service connection and uh, they are all listed in 38 USCC, uh, paragraph 1101. So what are those chronic diseases diagnosed after discharge? If any of the following chronic diseases are manifest to a 10% or more within the first year, there are a few exceptions noted below. After a vet is discharged from the military, then they are automatically considered caused by the military service and eligible for VA disability. So basically what you're hearing here is if you're within that one year of your ETS date, start going to doctors and building your records up to help support yourself because you never know what's going to happen in the future. The term chronic is used loosely here. Any of these diseases will be considered chronic unless it is suddenly caused by something clearly not related to military service. There are quite a few of these diseases on a VA presumptive list, so we're organized them by the body system, so just click on the code number to be taken to a discussion about the disease and how it's uh, rated. So with the blood, you have common ones like anema and Hodgkin's disease, leukemia, um, things like your heart, like arterial sclerosis, hypertension, uh, the, the valvular heart disease. Then you got gallstones, cirrhosis of the liver, gastric ulcers, diabetes, any disease of the thyroid, parathyroid, pituitary or adrenal glands, uh, kidney stones, nephritis, infection of or immune diseases like uh, Hansen's disease, lupus, tuberculosis, mental conditions, you know, they pretty much all fall under the same rating, so don't worry about the name of the mental condition they rate you with. And then there's other ones like progressive muscular atrophy, brain hemorrhages, epilepsy, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, malignant cancer of the brain, spinal cord, or the nerves, any other organic nervous system diseases like Huntington's disease, Organic basically meaning that it's not caused by an outside force like bacteria, virus, or similar. Uh, respiratory systems like uh, bronchitis. And collagen vascular disease, which is not a good one. Yeah, the, but the trail of symptoms must be followed by a definitive diagnosis within a reasonable time frame. And this presumption helps veterans who may or may not have had symptoms in service because they do not have to show proof that the condition began in service. And it also helps those that fail to seek immediate medical attention for their symptoms for one reason or another until a couple of years after separation from service. If a veteran develops symptoms associated with one of the chronic diseases listed in the statute and is diagnosed within the presumptive period, they are granted presumptive service connection disability benefits. However, there are situations where the veteran has current disability that was not diagnosed within the presumptive period. So what do you do now? After discharge, a lot of veterans attribute many symptoms to a reacclimation to civilian life. In this transition, they experience changes in food and eating habits, adjustment to sleep patterns, and even abrupt changes in weather. Um, all of these changes can wreak havoc on the in intestinal system, nervous system, immunological system. Luckily for most, these symptoms abate and they are back on track living a fruitful life. For others, however, as time goes by, the symptoms may wax and wane until they become chronic and ultimately end up with a diagnosis of a disease. Proof of symptoms can be confirmed by acceptable medical evidence, but it can also be confirmed by lay evidence. 
So for example, the 10% rating threshold for primary iron deficiency or primary uh, anema is this. Anema that has not developed secondary to an existing or known cause. Uh, its hemoglobin is 10, 10 grams over 100 milligrams or less with the findings such as weakness, easily fatigability, or headaches. In this case, lab work is necessary to show the hemoglobin value. However, a lay person can easily describe characteristics of this condition in the, ve in the veteran, such as lethargy, inability to complete tasks due to fatigue, excessive sleep, um, or frequent complaints of headaches. Another example is Raynaud's disease. Raynaud's disease causes your fingers and toes to feel numb and cold in response to cold temperatures and stress. It could also affect the nose, lips, ears, and even nipples. Raynaud's disease can arise secondary to an underlying medical condition. It can also occur on its own. The statute does not specify whether presumption applies to primary or secondary Raynaud's disease. Therefore, you should be encouraged to apply regardless of the origin. The 10% rating threshold is met when an individual ex experiences characteristic attacks occurring one to three times a week. Raynaud's disease causes the effect area of the skin to turn white. They then often turn blue and feel cold to the touch. Once circulation returns, the area turns red and swollen. These are visual characteristics of the disease that can be witnessed and validated by a lay person. For these situations where chronic disease can identify markers, the veteran should obtain written statements from co-workers, friends, neighbors, and relatives that can describe the symptoms observed during the presumptive time period. The use of lay statements can help fortify your claim for compensation based on the theory of presumptive service connection and its powerful tool to have on your side. So always use the best evidence you can. So what are the current process for presumptive disability decisions? The current process for establishing presumptive disability decisions involves four major entities, the Congress, the VA, the Institute of Medicine, the IOM, and other stakeholders, which include, among others, veteran service organizations. As discussed earlier, from time to time, Congress has exercised its power to create presumptive disability decisions through legislation, but also delegated authority to the Secretary of the VA to establish presumptions in certain instances. Some presumptive conditions have been challenged in court, leading to a revision of the statutes governing the administration of disability compensation by the VA. For example, the Veterans uh, Dioxin and Radiation Exposure Compensation Standards Act of 1984, Congress authorized the Secretary of the VA to determine which diseases warranted a presumptive of service connection relating to Agent Orange exposure during the Vietnam War. Pursuant to the Dioxin Act, the Secretary uh, promulgated it regulation which provided a presumption of Agent Orange exposure for any veteran who served in Vietnam and a presumption that a single disorder chloroc chloracne would be considered service-connected and thus eligible for disability compensation. Because the Secretary determined that there was no cause and effect relation between Agent Orange exposure and two other diseases, the Secretary declined to provide any other diseases besides the chloracne with the presumption of service connection. And as you know now, that list has grown and still continues to grow. Mm -hmm. So VA presumptive uh, disability decisions. A presumption is established through legislation, usually following a process through which an individual constituents seek re redress from a denial of a disability benefit from the VA, bringing their issues to the attention of Congress. VSOs representing a, con a contingent of veterans or rare, on a rare occasions, executive branch agencies have also lobbied Congress to consider certain presumptions. Through a 1921 amendment to the War Risk Insurance Act, Congress also granted the Secretary of the VA authority to establish regulatory presumptions. And here's a fun diagram of how that works. Mm -hmm. If you're watching on the YouTube, you'll yeah. see it. And if you're on radio, that's too bad. Yeah, so that's a little um, overview of uh, presumptive of chronic of chronic conditions. Yeah, so look into the era and the time frame that you served and see if you fall in any of these groups. And if you do, look into those potential presumptive conditions because each of those groups and time frames have different things that they believe in with, when it comes to presumption. Yeah, and as always, uh, 
at, uh, at the end, uh, do you have any suggestion for the book, movie, stuff to do? I finally got done watching the second season of Ted Lasso. It's not too bad. It's kind of soft for like the kind of movies and shows I watch, but the underlying value is it's pretty good. It's well written. I was really shocked by it. So check that out. And uh, words of wisdom of the day. Nurture your mind with great thoughts. To believe in heroic makes heroes. Yeah, said by Benjamin Disraeli. Uh, that's it, folks. Thank you for, li for listening. Until next time, over and out. Yeah, thank you. Bye.